Aloha mai kako. Um, welcome to all participants who are coming in to our webinar. Mahalo nui. We are also Facebook Live. As you come in, please share, 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 share. Um, share our, our posting on your own page, on your um, site. We appreciate your uh, support today. Thank you for um, attending our webinar. If you can, can you please do a shout out in the chat where you're from, where you're tuning in from, who you are. Um, we really appreciate you joining us tonight. Mahalo. For those who are getting on to our webinar now, mahalo, mahalo, mahalo. So we should be Facebook Live soon on our page um, with our cross post partners. I'm gonna go check it out and see if it's on and share it if you can. Oh, there it is, I see it. There we go and I'm gonna share it right now. Share it on my page. Go ahead and do a watch party. I'm getting good at this. I, I just learned the last time, so <laughs> we are um, now gonna start this watch party. Yes. <laughs> so mahalo to um, Elani Yon for um, logging oh. on. Mahalo. Thank you. Thank you. Um, for those who are in our webinar, please go ahead and share in the chat where you're from, who you are. Thank you for joining us. We really, really appreciate that. Uh, thank you to Wai Ale Ale Sarsona. How are you? Thank you from Waimanalo. My hometown. Nice that you're, yes. <laughs> really is hometown, our mama's hometown. Thank you to Lily Noy uh, from California. Mahalo, <coughs> thank you. Um, also to Thaddeus, uh, Chris Line, California. Thank you for um, joining us in our webinar. We really appreciate that. Judy Layfield, hi Judy from mm -hmm. Kaneohe. <laughs> thank you for being present with us. So as people start to um, come in and say aloha on the chat, um, we're gonna get started. Oh, to my Anake, to Poonani Hao from Washington, Seattle, Washington. Thank you for joining us. Mahalo. Um, we're just going to uh, get a little started. We're at 532. We have a nice um, presentation today uh, from Dr. Kalein Ugiva. Let's give her a congratulations. We, she's a doctor now from Waikato University. Um, I'm sorry, what was your um, degree in? It is in? Uh, indigenous studies, indigenous, indigenous uh, Maori and indigenous studies. Yeah. All right, hulo, hulo, doctor. <laughs> yeah, and Moani Widow Wagner, thank you for wishing her congratulations. Yes, mahalo to uh, Lehua Ka'ulu Kukui for joining us and Sandra from Fairfax, California, Maile Taoli'i, Margaret Lake. Leigh Ahi, I think, Connor, Margaret Connor. Thank you for joining us from um, Marin County, California. Wow, lots of you tuning in from California. We really appreciate you being here. Halia Rizzo, mahalo, mahalo. And Chris um, Ra, uh, Nogawa Ross from Carson, California. Wow, we're really represented the state of California, mahalo. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and also to all the people who are joining us through Facebook Live. So we're going to get started uh, right now. Um, I'm going to put up our, our slide and um, just wanted to welcome everybody. Uh, we are Papaku no Kamiha Ikana. Um, this is our Mauliola workshop. Um, and I want to introduce my sister. She is our president for our organization. We were formed in April 2005 after a trip to Aotearoa with uh, our, our mom's halau, Nakole Olikolehua. And when we returned, um, we created our, our organization and we're still existing and thriving. So I'd like to introduce my sister, Nuli'i Haini. Aloha mai kako. Um, welcome. 
uh, before I actually do introduce myself, we're going to do a, just a little bit of a breathing exercise for you all so that we can uh, bring in all the good stuff and ground us so that we can receive more. <clears throat> so we're going uh, to inhale and exhale four times. So Hanumai. Hanuaku. Hanumai. Hanuaku. Hanumai. Hanuaku. Hanumai. Hanuaku. No ke aloha li a li a e kapua li ko. No ke aloha na maka maka mai o le e mai ke aloha no ka pu vai o ka aina la e o mai ne. Ehe o la mau na kau a kau. Na va a pau alohae 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 Okay, let me put my papa lay back on. Aloha o nuli i ko ui noa noho vau ma waimanalo o ahu. My name is Nuli i Haini and I live and reside in Homestead, Waimanalo. <clears throat> um, I'm the president of Papaku no Kameha Ikana and also Kumuhula for uh, Napule Olikolehua. <clears throat> now, our organization, Papaku no Kameha Ikana, encourages and enables families to understand, live, and practice Hawaiian values and cultural traditions. Um, we plan, organize, and coordinate native Hawaiian activities for families that promote cultural practices. These activities um, include community service and educational events that perpetuate cultural protocol. So um, I'd like to at this time, oh, one more thing. Uh, yes, I am the eldest daughter of Lena, Rebecca Lena Ala Kalamahaini and Samuel Ladd Haini. Um, I have three other siblings and seven nieces and nephews. Mm -hmm. Mahalo. So I'd like to introduce my, my sister, um, Auli'i Hirahara, Haini Hirahara. Aloha mai kako o Auli'i Haini Hirahara no Honolulu mai au no ho Auli'i Kalapahine. Um, thank you Nuli'i for that introduction. Uh, we do have an, I have a my older sister, Nuli'i, then my brother, Kalama uh, Haini, and then we have a younger sister, Heli'i, Pu'ukau Ikaveku Haini. Um, so we wanted to just um, start off um, our, our evening um, sharing a little bit about our series. Uh, this is number two for us with Dr. Kale Nu'uhiva. Um, we thank you for joining us. I'm going to... Um, I, I would like to um, ask Nuli'i to introduce our board members and um, a little bit of our workshop tech support. Okay, so um, behind every leader, you always have great um, support. And besides myself, um, I'd like to introduce Napali Wood, who is our treasurer, Tiana Dole, who is our secretary, Carlin Porter, who is one of the board of directors, Punani Higa, who is uh, another board of director, and Rose Lum. Um, of course, my sister Auli is the cultural advisor. Um, and then it's always good to, to wrangle in the youth 
And um, so this is great um, training for them all. Um, I'd like to thank Kalamaku Haini, uh, website manager, Maluhia Hirahara, our, our uh, media specialist, workshop tech support. We have um, other siblings, uh, Malie Haini, Laiakea Hirahara, Kialoa Haini, Piilani Hirahara, Jamie Higa, Kenna Higa, and Kiaupono Magi Lee. So thank you. Um, this is uh, the board of, uh, board of Directors and also the technical support for Papaku no Kami Haikama. All right, mahalo. So um, our series is Mauliola Nona Koa Ko. Um, it's health and wellness, um, looking at all seasons, always and forever, season after season. We still here, right? Ola. Um, tonight, um, we have Facebook cross partners. We're, we're very excited to announce Kanayo Kana. Um, mahalo to uh, Gonzo and Kehawa Bad and Kaipo for helping us. Hawaii Nui Akea School of Knowledge, um, Papa Ola Lakahi, Ahakane, Office of Hawaiian Affairs, uh, Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement, OEV TV, and Mana Maoli. I also want to do a, a shout out to Meleapana with 105 um, KINE, um, which we'll be plugging in with them as well, and we mahalo your support as well. So I would like Nuli'i to introduce our presenter for the evening. <laughs> Sorry, unmute myself. Got excited in the back on um, waiting. But so, so very excited to hear um, <clears throat> this cultural practitioner. She has um, done a lecture about a couple of years ago with Papa Kuhl, and I believe it um, was on um, Haumea. And so we were so happy and fortunate to get her um, again to talk about Mauliola, um, healing through the sun. And, um, you know, we want to congratulate her. She just got her PhD from Waikato University. Yay! She's, she's a doctor. Um, <laughs> uh, she's strong in the Hawaiian language, Oli and Pule, as we all know her for. Um, I can go on and on and on, but without further ado, I would like to introduce Dr. Kalei Nuuhiva. Hey, aloha. Uh, aloha ahi ahi kako. Um, uh, he wahi mahalo ke ia ya oko pakahi apau ya niuli i lao auli i amika ohana haini kalama mahalo ho ia oko pakahi uh, no ke kono ana mai ia ue e noho pume oko ke ia ahi ahi. Um, Ia ue noho ana me o lua ho'o upua e ke aloha ka halia aloha no ko mama o ia ho'i ia ale wau maki maki e o lelo mau no ka mea e ue ana a ka hiki ke i ke ha'aheo no o ia ia o lua i ka hana nu ia o lua e hana ne maupopo ia u he he um, o keia ano mea he mea e hoahau uli aku ia ia uh, Nō leila, um, mea he wahi aloha ke ia ia o lua, me koko mama, me ka ohana So mahalo, mahalo, mahalo um, ai. Ok gang, um, just have to honor, um, I have to honor and say thank you to Papa Ku o Kameha Iku for this opportunity to talk and to share with all of you um, and so uh, these two guys know this my style, which is just real real casual. And so that's that's how I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk real casual, like we're all sitting across each other uh, at the uh, kitchen table or something. And we're just having some coffee and talking stories. So that's that's kind of um, how I'm going to talk. And um, yeah, um, I am going to be talking about the sun this evening, but I do want to address the Mauliola, um, this idea of Mauliola and uh, where it comes from and how, how I started doing these things. But I'm, I'm a researcher by trade. Uh, that's what I do professionally. And, um, and, and, I, and I do teach at the university too, but uh, 
um, yeah, so what I, I spend a lot of time in the newspapers, I spend a lot of time in dictionaries and books and all these things that just, I, I hunger and I thirst for things that are Hawaiian. I'm proud to be Hawaiian. I'm proud of my um, genealogy that all, that all connects all of us actually from Hawaii. We end up being, being connected to somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. So um, that's one of the nice things about um, being here from Hawaii and being a Hawaiian. So uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so, um, so I spend a lot of time finding cool things and I, I park all these things, I call them garages. It's something that my friend Noi Noi Wong Wilson calls them their garages. They're just, they're just folders on my, on my desktop. And when I find cool things, they get, they get stored there. You know, I'm like, ah, oh, someday I'll come back to this. And so I just collect things of interest. I'm usually interested in pule, I'm interested in mo'olelo, but really about pule and mele that talk about the environment, that talk about practice, um, that talks about um, religion, spirituality, philosophy, those kinds of things. So I just kind of stick it all in, in these little files all over on my laptop. And, um, and so, uh, you know, when the whole COVID thing started, and you may have heard me talk about this before, uh, I really thought, oh, I know what I can do. I can, I can pull, pull out those, uh, those pule that I've been collecting for years uh, about healing and health and well-being and ecosystems and how we see the um, nature to be our akua and how if, the na if nature is healthy, then we'll be healthy too. We'll thrive too. If our environment is healthy, we'll be healthy. And so that was my way of just trying to connect people to that and actually connect myself to that and try just to get through the whole COVID thing, the whole coronavirus thing, the crazy, crazy madness that was happening by our poor leadership that was, that's out there. And, um, you know, just, just everything that was happening on social media and the media and just devote every morning to about 20 minutes to a half an hour of doing these pule. And every week, uh, there's a bunch of us that get together um, and we uh, do it on Zoom. We just, uh, for 20 minutes, we do, we do health and well-being pule uh, from the ancestors, from, our, from the old people and um, try to make it relevant for us today. And so that's another thing that I'm very passionate about is making it relevant for us today. And uh, finding relevancy in that is, is one way to see each other as a community members from across the pond to all over the world, meeting at a platform that is pretty universal. So uh, we preach something that we call radical aloha, and um, which basically means we accept anybody and everybody into our, into our hui. And we, we don't care who you um shakalaka to, great. If it's your tree, your ancestor, um, it could be uh, Jesus, it could be, um, you know, Allah, we'd, we'd, we're um, happy. Whatever makes you connected to what you feel is spirituality and important to you, great. Just come on, um, on a board and, um, and um, you know, join us. And so that's kind of uh, my little commercial, uh, how I am um, uh, interested in this idea of Mauliola. And I just want to say up front, I'm not a healer. I'm not a healer. I'm a researcher. So uh, I, I take um, pleasure in sharing the interesting um, things. And uh, one of the wonderful things that um, the old people did in the, ba in, in the past and that we can still do today. Okay, so that's enough of that. That's my beginning. I'm going to share my slides. I have um, a PowerPoint presentation. I'll try to keep to time. Um, and then um, I've asked New Li'i and Auli'i if there are questions that are out there, if people have questions, uh, add it to the chat and they'll get it to me um, right away so that I can uh, address those things and answer them right away, okay? Okay, can everybody see my, I can't really tell. I'm just going to go if, um, yeah, okay, I guess so. Yeah. I'm just, it can, okay, okay, cool. All right, so I'm going to, they asked me, Nuli'i and Auli'i asked me to talk about, uh, about the sun and the healing properties in the sun. So um, that's what I'm going to address. Uh, I also want to say up front that these are, uh, my answers come from the things that I researched, come from the things that I practiced uh, and experienced out in the, in, in, the, in the environment, in the universe too, I suppose. And um, and so that's, that's my platform that I stand on. That's my kahua that I stand at. And that's the heiau that I stand on too as well. 
And so I also want to acknowledge and, and say that um, there are other practices out there that are different and Hawaiian practices that are different and see these same things differently. So I, I want to acknowledge that those exist too, that, that this is just not the only answer, that there are several answers to get to the same thing, right? To understand um, our universe, okay, and our environment. So I'm going to start off with what I wrote about in my paper, which is the definition of Akua from what our, our ancestors wrote about in the Hawaiian language newspapers, in uh, literature. And the reason why I'm starting here first is because then you can understand what I'm talking about later on when I start talking about the pule and the lines from the different prayers and things and incantations that uh, we'll be discussing this evening. I know some people go, ooh, incantations, sounds like, um, you know, um, Halloween action. But um, I learned from the Maori that that's, that's a positive um, term uh, because the idea is that you're engaging with things. You're engaging, you're, you're, the idea of prayer and incantations is you're focusing on something that's out there and uh, whoever that is that you umshakalaka to, and that you're trying to engage that so that you can imbue or, or um, get a part of whatever it is you're asking for or whatever it is you, you need at the time that you're uh, seeking to thrive and be healthy and, and this idea of well-being. So I thought I'd start with that. What is akua and the definition of akua? So uh, in the Andrews Dictionary or the Andrews Hawaiian Language Dictionary, uh, which is one of the older dictionaries, um, the word akua um, says that it can be anything that is a spiritual or supernatural being. Um, and it's, a, it's a, this idea of uh, a god, this idea of worship, but it can also mean things, as you see here as you're reading, uh, it can also mean things that move on its own such as in this case they're talking about a compass or a watch to them that was a kua you know because it was something that was moving on its own um, but it can also be um, things such as the growth of trees the sprouting of seeds um, those things the the way that lightning um, lights up the sky uh, rain that falls wind that blows so anything that's a natural thing that can happen with um, on its own without man and man can't actually or kanaka can't actually do that on our own we can't do it on our own if we do want to do things like that like create electricity or create wind we have to have something we have to create something that can actually do those things for us but we can't actually do it on our own so that's kind of the idea of aqua as you see it explained here in the Pukui and Albert Dictionary, which is a, a little more modern, we have um, the, uh, the idea of God. When we say akua, the idea of God, goddess, spirit, ghost, devil, image, idol, corpse, divine, supernatural, godly. If it's a capital G, then it's that idea of the Christian God. Um, and so, yeah, these are some of the other um, definitions that start to sound a little more familiar to us, right, as we use, utilize the word akua. Um, but I want to talk about Akua as uh, our kupuna talked about it before, um, as or well during the the changes that occurred and the influences that came in and, and changed. Uh, Pre-contact was a little was very different, starkly different uh, kind of religion, kind of spirituality and philosophy than we are doing today because we are influenced by so many things and been indoctrinated into many different thoughts and philosophies. So uh, part of my paper was to look at that, to go and see what did people say at that beginning. In, and so this is sort of like in the 1830s to the 1860s, mid 1860s. What were um, the kupuna writing about in the Hawaiian language newspapers? What were they writing in, um, in their own books and those kinds of things? And so this is Kepalino's description um, uh, his, his book wasn't published until 1932, but prior to that, it, it had been part of a big series. Um, anyway, he says, So when, when you see the word akua, there are many, 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 many different translations, different interpretations for that word akua. So uh, one of the nice things he does in his writings, um, he 
he sort of lines it up and categorizes all the different thoughts of what the aqua, what the term aqua means. And so the first word uh, or the first uh, interpretation is he haku nui, okay, a greater God, a greater aqua. And so um, I'm going to introduce you guys to this idea of Akua doesn't actually equal God all the time. Okay. And so a greater Akua to, to us would be something like, or to them would be something like Kane, Ku, Lono, Kanaloa, um, and Haumea. And so um, the second part of what I did was went to go and see what those folks wrote in the newspapers, as I was saying. And I honed in on the, uh, there's a series in the Hawaiian language newspapers called the Ho'omanakahiko series. It starts in 1932-ish and it ends about, uh, oh, sorry, 1832 ish And then it ends about um, 1866. And so through their writings, they talk about who these Hakunui are. And so the Hakunui are what I just named. So we have Kane and the various Kane we have uh, Kanaloa, and these two are the older Akua, is what they say. After that comes Ku, Lono, and then Haumea, too. They also had a female Akua that they acknowledged in these papers that don't always come through. Um, we, we normally hear, oh, there's only four major god and gods, and actually there are, um, there are five. And then from these five, many, many more come off of them. Okay, but there are the greater Akua. These are the greater guys. Okay, the Heihaku Nui. Uh, and then in the Western world, you would equate that to um, Jehovah, Jehovah, Jesus, if that's your um, uh, religion, um, uh, Buddha, if that's your philosophy and your religion. Um, yeah, Allah, all those folks, um, the many different Akua that are out there. So these would be your greater Akua. That's your category, that first category. Okay, now the second um, translation or interpretation for the word Akua is Heuhane, souls. And I am so happy that I see this because when I grew up, the word Uhane meant ghost when I was growing up. It still sort of means that today. But in the old days, the word Uhane was a very distinct term that they utilized for the idea of souls. So that essence of somebody, that person, a wailua, it would be another term for that, the essence of somebody, and not necessarily the idea of ghosts. So you, your, your ability to, to move around at night when you're sleeping, your soul gets to do that, right? So that would be your time that you're in Akua at that time, your, your soul, okay? Three, mana, ike, ikaika, Kumu ole, make ole. So um, these can be interpreted as mana, ike, and ikaika would be extraordinary feats. Somebody who has this, this, just this being about them, when they walk into the room, they, they just light up the whole entire room. They fill in the space. So that would be somebody who would be called an akua. Ike, knowledge, somebody who has extraordinary knowledge and wisdom that just naturally comes to them that would be called that person and that gift that they have would be called akua. Ikaika, strong feats. Um, and we have lots of stories about people like that. Maui, we have uh, stories about um, Kamiki, uh, Lono Ikamakahiki. So these people who, who did extraordinary things um, and had these gifts that could be beyond what a regular Kanaka would do would be considered akua as well. Uh, cool. Yes. Yes. Is no. It, good. Thank you for cutting me off. <laughs> um, no, it's good. It's good. I have a, I have a question from Thaddeus. Um, is yep. there? Um, he's uh, a, a, in our webinar attendee. Is there a name for the Hawaiian practice of religion? Well, uh, just ho'omana. Ho'omana is uh, one of the terms. Yeah. There's several terms, but that's one of them. Ha'avina would be another word, uh, another term that's utilized. Yeah. Havina Akua, Ho'omana Kahiko, Ho'omana. Ho'omana is one of the more um, kanai nai. There, there's several uh, actual terms actually for it. Yeah. I hope I answered that question. Mahalo Nui. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, kumu ole and, ma and make ole are where I want to focus on. Um, kumu ole uh, meaning that it doesn't really have an actual physical body. 
So, and that they're immortal. So you could equate this to elemental phenomena, natural phenomena out there. This is talking about wind, rain, the sun, uh, the ocean, water, the way plants grow, plants themselves, animals, um, natural elements that are out there. I mean, it goes on and on and on. This is how we have our, uh, this idea that Hawaii and Akua are 400,000 because we have all these different winds. Each of those winds become an Akua because it's something that it can do on its own. It's a natural phenomenon. All these different rains, snow, sleet, rocks, the formation of mountains, Pele. I mean, it just goes on and on, right? It just goes on and on. And so you can see how 400,000 Akua can be named fairly quickly if you start looking at all these different natural phenomena that are around us in our environment. And then this idea of makeole being immortal, and that's kind of what, how we see ocean, the, the idea of ocean and it being kanaloa and uh, providing us food, but also pro providing us life in many different ways, but also with the ability, if you're in there, if you, your boat sinks and you're there a long time, you're not gonna be there a long time. You know, it's, it can also take your life too as well. So there's this idea of a fine balance between um, engaging with those natural processes that are out there. Okay, just cut me off if there's any more questions. Okay, and then Heili Inui is also considered, so these are chiefs of high status, chiefs and chiefesses of high status. Um, they're considered Aku, and that has to do with a genealogical um, connection to um, someone who has been deified at one point or another, and so they were considered um, Akua on land or in, in, around you in, in the Kanaka world. Uh, kupapa'u and lapu. Kupapa'u is our word for corpses. Um, so once someone becomes a corpse, they're considered uh, an akua because their uhane has left. Um, and then lapu, lapu are ghosts. So you can see this is the different term that they utilize to say ghost instead of uhane. Um, they would say uh, ghosts were, were lapu, which means a little bit wild out there. Um, there's actually stories about that, but we don't have time to go into that, but okay. And then um, number six, the last thing that uh, Kepelino talks about is uh, kawa ha'alele loa. And kawa ha'alele loa are the lowest castes of people. Uh, some people translate that as slaves, um, but they weren't exactly slaves in the Hawaiian society. Um, they were people who were born into the function of being dedicated to ceremony, in other words. And this would be where... Um, human sacrifices would come into um, the discussion. And, but um, yeah, so anyways, there's that. But I want to stick to the Akua, the translation of Akua that sits in this number three zone, elemental phenomena, natural processes, those kinds of things, um, extraordinary feats. Those, those are where I'm sitting when I'm going to be talking about um, the natural process of the sun and how, um, how uh, it is addressed for healing purposes, okay? All right, so um, there are several, several, several hundreds and hundreds of um, na pule ho'ola and pule ho'ola uh, are the terms that are utilized to um, describe healing and uh, health and well-being types of prayers or incantations. Um, there are many, um, but I've, I don't know, I've I don't know, collected something like 20 or something like that. Not a lot, but um, just enough that I could share. Some, some I don't share. Some, some are shareable with many, many people. Um, so that's the term that, is, um, that, that I looked at to um, get the information for this evening um, so I could talk about it. And when they asked me to talk about the sun, uh, until um, New Lee and Au Lee asked, I actually didn't recognize or pay attention to it. I only noticed it after they asked me to look for it, which I want to be upfront about that. And then when I saw it, I was like, oh, wow, it's actually everywhere in all of these chants. And so I'm, I'm going to be talking about two important elements that you see in most of these pule ho'ola. There is always two elements that are there, the element of water and heat, okay, so the heat kind of skipped over over there, but yeah, heat, which is, uh, so some sort of water, so there's always an, uh, um, this idea of fresh water being there, um, 
fresh drinkable water. It has to be water that um, is moving. It's moving. Uh, it can be water that uh, formed on, as you see here on the plants, um, on this Pukiave plant, which is in the form of dew. Um, you would see it on leaves, you would see it on flowers, and one of the la'o lapa'au or uh, medicinal ways in which it was collected, that's the kind of water that you would go after. This water was called wailani. Uh, wailani, waihua is another term for it, or waiakua, because it hasn't touched the ground yet. The idea is that it was caught by plants. And so uh, people would go and sort of healy the side of the, the trees to release the water uh, onto a receptacle of some sort to capture that water. And that would be some of the water that they would utilize for ceremony rituals and, and um, especially for Puleho Ola in this case. Um, so that would be one thing that you would see fresh moving water streams um, is another way that you would see them talking about it springs those kinds of things. Okay, so water that isn't sitting and being stagnant. It has to be water that's actually moving and continuing on its way from the tops of the mountains all the way down to the ocean. Then the second is heat. And heat can come from most of the time from the sun. And um, so uh, it can be sunrise. There are, there are three times that um, the sun is mentioned. So it would be at the time that the sun is rising. Um, which it would be one of the more potential uh, times for some sort of ceremony ritual that can happen. Another time is when it's directly overhead in, at your zenith, right, directly over you right around noon, noon-ish, I should say. And then, um, and then when the sun sets, when it's setting, that's another time that is considered a, a sacred time. And so you see this theme sort of repeated, this idea of water, that is constantly being mentioned in these Puleho Ola, and then the idea of the sun. And the sun can be sunrise uh, directly over your head at your zenith or sunset. Okay, or, or all of that too. Um, so we'll see some of that. Um, so a uh, majority of the time you will see that Kane is addressed in and this is the natural process of kane okay and um and those natural as i was saying what akua was these natural processes that we see in the environment is what we look towards to see if it is healthy it, if it is thriving and continuing to do its thing then we can also do the same too we can imbue we can we can kanai nai we can engage what we see that's happening out there uh we can collect the water we can go out into the sun and just enough of it so that we, we can survive, right? So kane is one of the natural processes that um, is addressed. So when we see the term kane, we should immediately think, oh, there's a water element there in the healing, and there's a heat element there in the healing. And so um, normally, or uh, oftentimes, we'll see the term kane kawai ola, and kane kawai ola is addressed uh, for that water factor, the idea of water, and then uh, kane ka onohi o kala would be the eyeball, the full orb of the sun. And that's a, another akua that is being addressed, that natural, the idea of the natural process of the sun. Okay, all right. So, um, and, um, oh, and I also want to say there are other akua that are also mentioned too as well. Um, so you see, you'll see lono often um, also addressed. You'll see hiiaka often addressed. Um, you'll see uh, ku also um, being addressed and kanaloa being um, addressed. Each of those that I just named all have water elements to them, what kinolao that are water. And so that's what's being addressed. And they also have, all of them have um, natural processes that have to do with the sun. Okay. Um, when hiiaka is being addressed, her natural process has to do with the fast restoration of something that has been damaged or destroyed in, in the environment, right? So when, they, when you see her in these puleho ola, in these prayers for health and well-being, she's being addressed because that energy that she does, this natural um, recovery of someone who is ill, is what we're trying to imbue in somebody, right? So we want that hi'iaka energy to come. We want that hi'iaka natural process of quick recovery after illness to come and help us. Okay, so I'm going to show you some examples of these lines in, um, in the pule.
I just gotta make sure I'm sticking to my time. Okay, here we go. Lines in Pulehoola. First is e kane, e kane, e kane ola, he ola aku ke ia ia oi. So here, right up front, the, the line say to you, I'm addressing this natural process of kane. And which kane am I talking about? Kane e kawaiola. Kane who has to do, who sits in the water of the, the fresh water, okay? It's the, the fresh living water. That's even more important, right? And the second line, hey, kau kau la kuke ya oi. I'm addressing you intimately. I want you, kane kawai ola, to come from the environment into my being so that I can, I can also find health and well-being too as well. If I see you out there, I know I'll, I can put that in myself too as well. Two, eia e kala hiki, kapale o kane, kapale o mako, eola e yakako, uh, ka onohi o kala. So this is a pule, one of the pule that we do every morning. Um, and this is addressing eia e kala hiki, kapale o kane. They're saying here, here's the sun, the arrival of the sun. Kapale o kane, it is our, our, um, our protection, our, 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 um, our pale to keep us healthy and well, to keep us uh, safeguarded from all those other things that might be out there. So that's what we're addressing the sun in that way. Kapale o mako. So, um, you know, we're, we're asking for that to happen. Eolai kako ka onohi o kala. We live, we're living through ka onohi, um, ka onohi o kala, which is the eyeball, right? That orb of the sun, that process of the sun that's out there, that's giving us energy. So we just need just a little bit every day. We don't need a lot of it because too much of it is not good. Too much of a good thing is, is always not good, right? But we just need enough of it. And um, during this whole COVID thing and the coronavirus thing, we were all stuck, trapped in the houses. Uh, it, we all felt a little better when we could go outside and walk around in the sun. So when you're feeling a little down and out, that's always a good rec recommendation is to go out into the sun, work in the garden a little bit, walk outside, uh, come back into your home and continue staying safe, right? Okay. Ke ho uluneao e na kane, e ia kawai ne he wai ola a e ola hoi. So um, these are some lines from another um, healing chant that's talking about this idea of manifesting health and well-being. And addressing not just one kane, but several kanes, because that's what na kane mean, all of the kane maybe, or just a few. And in this case, it would be the water, um, kane who look over water, and um, kane kawai ola that gives us health and well-being. Yeah, and you know what's really interesting, and I've said this before, um, is that a lot of these pule, when they end, it's not really asking these natural processes to help us. It's telling the natural process that it needs to do it needs to do what it does, so that we can also be uh, healed too as well and find healing and well-being in it as well. And at the end of it, um, you see that they say, "Oh, and it happened." So they're just so convinced that when they address these natural things that are out there, the 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 latter part means that it has manifested. It has uh, happened. And even though it hasn't happened yet, the, um, they're so uh, trusting and believing that it will, that there's just no doubt in their mind that it's going to happen. Okay, and then we have a chant called Wayakane, he ui he ni nao e ui akwana au ya oi, ai i hea kawayakane, where are the waters of kane? Um, and this comes from a story called uh, Aukele Nui Aiku, and it happens, takes place on Kauai where they're looking for all of the different water of Kane and where you can find them. And they name all the different places where you can find water in that particular chant for Kauai. Um, but it's really addressing this idea of ma uh, managing and knowing, knowing where those types of waters are, are located. Where is fresh water? Where can I go to get fresh water? And something we talked about this morning um, in our morning chat is, um, in our morning chants is this, uh, idea that La'au Lapa'au, our healers, would know the different minerals and things that these waters would have. Waters that came from springs, waters that came from, from
from the tops of the mountains down to the streams that move, they would know if there was a, enough alaya in that in that water to go over there and get go go collect that water. It's good for you. You need it, or um, water that's brackish water also too for healing those kinds of things. Anyway, so this chant tells you where you can find all of those different kinds of waters. What are the signs? What do you need to see? And Right away in the first two uh, sections of that chant, they talk about the connection between the sun and water. That like if you can see, aya i kahikina kala puka i haehae, water can be found in the east in a place where haehae is, which is the furthest eastern point on Hawaii Island and of the whole archipelago of Hawaii, which actually almost became some another place after that lava flow, yeah, in 2018. But good thing it didn't happen. Okay, so it's still haehae gang, um, out in the east in Puna. So it can be referring to springs that might be there. It can also be referring to the simple fact that the sun rose and there's dew all over on the grasses and the trees and those kinds of things. So it might be um, talking about that. That is where you can find water. And the second uh, pauku or the second section says, And kaulanakala is a poetic way of saying uh, at, in the West where the sun sets. And it continues on. But so, for me, I can see that they're talking about convection and the idea of at the second half of the day as the sun is setting, it also brings in the clouds um, that come through and uh, typically will drop, drop some rain, right? And the late afternoons and the late e or early evenings, uh, we, we used to have rain pretty um, like clockwork, but not so much now. Not sure if it's climate change or what. But anyway, so that's um, this idea of them understanding um, where, how the sun is connected to water and where it is, uh, where you can find it. Okay, and finally, Pule no Kala. So um, I think I just have enough time here. Oh, I don't even know. Maybe, um, maybe I'll be done quickly and we can go for questions and answers, but Pule no Kala. Okay, so Pule no Kala is, um, oh, sorry, it's a little messy here um, uh, on my um, uh, screen here. So um, we'll, we'll see if we can make our way through it. But um, I just wanna say that uh, this is a pule that comes from the Bishop Museum in one of the archives. Um, so New Li'i and Auli'i's mom uh, in, invite, where we were all part of a group that went from island to island and we were studying heiau for a long time, for about two years. Uh, we went to Kauai and to Maui, Hawaii Island, uh, Oahu. Uh, we went to Kaho'olawe too as well. And then we ended up on Mokumanamana eventually, Northwest Hawaiian Islands, to go and see all these different things that were out there to find connections between heiau and water and the sun, stars, those kinds of things. Um, anyway, one of, our, um, one of our assignments was to go and find sun chants. And uh, so we all went off and we all went to go and get, uh, go into our various uh, archives to go and find things. And so this particular pule, uh, which is a little messy on the, on the thing here, I wonder if I should just change it and then um, put it up on the other screen uh, because I have it online. Maybe not, that's okay. All right, um, is to, you know what? I'm going to, yeah, yeah, wait, I'm gonna stop. Sharing gang, give me, I, I'm since I'm so ahead of myself here. <laughs> I'm just gonna pull up the actual pulley itself. Then it'll be nice. Then you can screenshot it and have it for yourself. Okay, pule no kala. All right, this is much better. Okay, mahalo for giving me some time to do that. Yeah, I didn't like that. Okay, here we go, this is much better. Okay, so um, this, this pule was, um, was researched by uh, Dr. Hokulani Holt from Maui. She's a kumuhula from Maui. So this is one of her, uh, this is her pule that she found that she shared with our group. So I have to acknowledge that, that she researched it. Um, it came from, it was a handwritten note actually, uh, found in a folder in one of the hen, um, you know, uh, folders, which is the Hawaiian ethno notes, ethnological notes, I think, uh, ethnographical notes, hen anyway, <laughs> at the Bishop Museum. 
And um, so she brought it to share with us. So the air that you're going to learn this evening actually comes from that, um, from that particular, um, that, uh, that uh, pule that she put together. Um, it's done in what is called a mele kahoa hoa. And a mele kahoa hoa is where it says one, there's a one, which means there's a leader. And you have a hoa, a bunch of hoa, uh, a friend who are the all. Okay, so you have one and then all. So uh, I'll be the one just because that's the luck of the draw. I'll be the one. And you guys can be the all, at least for now. And then eventually we'll, we'll go through the whole thing like we're doing the whole thing together. Because what happens if you're out there by yourself um, and you're the one and there's no all? So we'll do both sides too, okay? So, but for now, we'll learn it one and all. It's done in a kavele style. Kavele is um, a chanting style where it's a stylized uh, form of speech. So uh, if you ever heard the chant, iku mau mau, iku wa, iku mau mau, iku hulu hulu, ikala no well, that particular chant is a kavele style. And it is also a mele kahua hua, where there's a leader who will say something and then a bunch of people who will respond. So. Um, so let me talk about this chant first before we actually learn it. Uh, in it, there um, were some notes written, and it talked about the use of uh, the sun, and specifically in the east. And so it also said this would be a, you know how in Hawaiian culture, we, uh, we go to, uh, we do a hiuai ceremony or a kapukai ceremony, and uh, so let me talk about that for a little bit first. So it sets this up for, uh, and, and basically what a kapukai or hiwe is, is when you're feeling a little down, a little junk, not well, or, you know, um, if, if you were sick, one of the things that would happen is you go into the ocean um, and uh, you sort of release whatever negativity you might have. Some people would use a lei, a lei of, made out of seaweed called limukala. They would make the lay, they would go into the ocean, and then they would wait till the lay sort of drifted off on its own. But basically the idea is to go into the ocean. And the reason why that's happening, uh, for those of you who don't know what that is, is um, the most purest time any of us will ever be in our entire life um, is when we reside in our mother's womb. And so for those nine months when we reside in our mother's womb, we live in ocean water and we're pure because nothing has come in to contaminate us or um, change the way we think. You know, everything is in, in, um, instinctual while we're there. We're basically living off of our ancestral DNA, our ancestral memories while we're in our mother's womb. So because of that, we're in the Hawaiian thought. It's where the purest will ever be. And so um, we have ceremonies that help us to feel better about things and to release things. And, and so a kapukai and a hiuwai is exactly that. So you would go to the ocean. I think that's why a lot of us like to, like to go to the beach, why a lot of us like to swim in the ocean, why a lot of us like to surf or fish. Uh, we get that feeling again of being in our mother's womb again while we're in the ocean. Because, yeah, we are in, in salinated water. It's, it's saline, right? Salt water while we're in, in that womb during those nine months. Then, push, out comes the water. And then you, right, when you're born. And then for the rest of our lives, we're trying to get back into that state of purity. And we do that by going into the ocean. We do that by um, doing ceremonies called pikai or py. And um, so it's, it's always about reminding us what we were in our pure forms when we were back in our mother's womb. So, um, so there's that. That's kind of, and so you're like, okay, Kale, what does this have to do with this chant that you're going to teach us about the sun? Well, in the handwritten notes, it said um, that one of the most powerful hiuwai that are out there or kapukai that are out there is the sun and so they utilize the sun in that way okay to to go and release things that were super super heavy and super super um hard for somebody to to let go or to give up or if they were sick to feel better and okay so the idea and the explanation that is in the notes talks about taking the person 
and going all the way to the east. And in the notes, they talk about Kumukahi, actually, going to the east. And then um, they would put the person up against the Kumukahi rocks or the cape over there. There's, if you've ever been there, there's like these major rocks that are there, rock, rock formations. Uh, one of them is Kumukahi, the other is Ha'e Ha'e. So either Ha'e Ha'e or Kumukahi, you would go place the person there. Uh, and then um, you would wait to the sun as, uh, to rise in the morning. And as the sun is rising, the heat that's coming off of the sun as it gets higher and higher, higher up into the sky is actually penetrating the person or heating up the person too as well as they're sitting there. And so that's kind of what this chant is talking about, how, how um, this pule is talking about how the sun comes up, you know, right before that we're cold. And as it gets higher and higher, it starts to get hotter and hotter. And by the time it reaches a certain point, uh, in the sky, it's so hot that the person has um, almost close to, uh, it's almost like inducing a fever to release any kind of an illness that's out there, forcing the illness to leave. And so that's kind of what this is saying. Um, so we, we chant, we, we utilize the chant to envision those things, to utilize the imagery to go through that process of the sun, Kane, as he's rising, as the sun is rising and, and penetrating us with that kind of energy. Um, it also said on the notes that you couldn't do it more than once. This is something you only, uh, yeah, you only did it once. You didn't do it more than once. And, and it was sort of like a, almost like a last ditch effort to um, try and get some healing to happen. So um, those are some of the um, things that this particular chant uh, had as its handwritten notes. So we're gonna learn it, okay? Uh, we do it often. We did it today. Uh, and so um, I'll, I'll talk about each. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I cut Sorry. you off. We did have a, a question. Okay. Um, maybe you could do this uh, afterwards or, or maybe you could answer it now. But um, um, we had, uh, I think it, his name is Nicholas Ackerman. He huh? was asking, what about if you live in Portland? Um, yeah. It rains all the time and there's not as much sun as Hawaii. Yeah. yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, yeah, um, that's a uh, yeah. What would you do, right? Um, yeah, uh, excellent question. Um, I actually don't actually know what I I would tell you to do about that. Um, you'd probably have to look into what the natives do there, what the native uh, indigenous people do there. I would imagine they do something with fire or some kind of smoke or sweat lodge or something like that but i don't actually know so i don't want to i don't want to uh, imply that i do know i actually don't um uh though uh yeah what would you do from oregon i don't know yeah that's that's a good question um i can only tell you what we do here and perhaps you could find ways in which you would be able to do the same thing in oregon i i, I guess you wouldn't do it when it's raining um, or you would find other ways to do something similar, but yeah, um, I don't, I don't really have an answer for that. So I'll just, I rather not say than say and imply when I don't really know. Yeah, but it's a good question. Um, uh, and I wouldn't know what other people would do on, on in other places. So, um, yeah, uh, unfortunately I'm not a healer, so I cannot say, uh, find a healer. Yeah, I hope that uh, helps something, but yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, any, any other questions? No, uh, that's it, mahalo. Okay, yeah, yeah, I don't wanna say that I know, I actually don't know what, what, uh, what the answer would be for that. But I can tell you what, what happens to our pule and um, give you the process of what, it hap what happens or what is expected to happen and perhaps you can start to, um, because the idea too is that you can chant these things and uh, bring it into existence through your imagery and this idea of imagery um, and Hello. manifesting those things. Yes, go ahead. I'll we had um, uh, Puna Nihau from Seattle. She said uh, what she likes to do traditionally is play Hawaiian music for war. Oh, so, okay. Peace. Cool. <laughs> Mahalo. That's beautiful. Mahalo. Mahalo for sharing that. Awesome. Yeah, music is another healing thing, right? It makes us feel better. So, 
Yeah, and I mean, if you have a physical ailment, my, my, I mean, go and see a doctor for that. That's something that they're trained to do. Uh, right up front, go and do that. Um, uh, seek out your naturopath if you have somebody like that who could help you, uh, or your healers, natural healers that are out there. Those are the folks to go and see and um and have a discussion say hey man we i heard about this thing with the sun is that pl plausible can it happen will it work for us you know we don't we're it's a place that there's a lot of rain so yeah um that was that's what i would say is go as as everything go and see your doctor seek the profession professional folks who are trained to actually answer and address those things first um our uh, what we do in the mornings we we're more there for your mental health we're there for your spiritual health try to just help you get through um releasing some anxiety you know or releasing stress uh, and we do it as a community we do it um because some of us have grandchildren and aren't able to see our grandchildren some of us have families and friends we're not able to see them because of social distancing and so we feel that what we do and what we offer sort of assists that in some way. We formulated a community. Everyone is welcome. We're, uh, we're there for each other. And um, I usually leave, people leave in the day feeling a little better and it just helps us to get through that one day. We, it's not to get you know, beyond that. It's just to be able to handle what we can handle for just one more day and that's it. Uh, with everything that's being inundated around us, the politics that's out there, the, the I mean, everything that's happening. It's this 2020 has been crazy. I mean, I think they released every single Kraken that's possible out there. <laughs> the mythological uh, Kraken, uh, Krakens that are out there um, to, to challenge us. I mean, there is nobody here right now who hasn't been challenged from um, the things that are happening uh, to us. So... Our, our gatherings are mostly for, for those kinds of things, just to, just to help everybody feel a little better for another day, just to get, get them not just enough oomph to get through the day again and then come and see us the next day. So that's what we do for everybody. That's what we offer anyway and provide that. Um, there are people who are medical doctors that show up and offer medical pro, um, you know, advice to people. There are healers who come those kinds of things, but we, we leave that uh, work up to those guys because um, they're the professionals. Sorry, that was a long um, speech. Didn't mean for that to go that way. Anyway, um, I just want to make sure I'm good on time. Oh, yeah. Oh, choke time. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so here we are back to this chat, talking about this chat. Uh, so it's a one and all. And it talks about the rising of the sun and this idea of going to the east, somewhere in the east at the beginning of the day to greet the day and then actually um, let that heat wash over you um, and that good energy that the sun um, has. And so uh, in the description, as I was saying earlier, of what a hiuwa is, this idea of releasing negativity, um, the notes say that the same thing can happen um, through the sun. And this is one of those ceremonies for, for that. And, you know, Hawaiian ceremonies aren't really elaborate in that kind of way. Uh, it's very, um, it's, it's uh, simple. It's complex in its simplicity. And so this idea of um, trying just to connect to the sun and connecting to it as it's rising up in the sky, getting higher and higher in the sky. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of what it's about. And um, trying to emulate that in your life, that, that natural process out there in your life to, you know, um, let the light shine, um, let the heat in, those kinds of things, those kinds of ideas uh, are exactly what this, this chant is about. So anyway, so let's learn it. Let's, um, so it starts off, ekala, ekala. Okay, so ekala, ekala says basically, son, son, hey you, son, you guys. Okay. And everybody is going to respond by saying, ki ola ola. And ki ola ola means to cast off. But um, there's actually an image, and, and that's the thing about the Hawaiian language. There's um, not really a single word that translates, a uh, single English word that completely translates what we're, we're saying in, in Hawaiian. Um, and that's because it comes with uh, imagery, it comes with experience, those kinds of things. So um, ki ola ola 
the image that ki ola ola is is if you were to take a pebble and then you throw it and and it does that sort of that that arch that that that's a ki ola ola when you throw something and so it's talking about the sun rising, rising and setting. So that arch that's going to happen, the dome in the sky that the, that the sun is going to go through from the rising to the setting. Okay, so, so I'll say, e kala, e kala, and you guys are all going to say, ki ola ola. Okay, and you have to say it with a little oomph when you do it, right? Okay, so let's try. E kala, e kala, ki ola ola. All right. Okay, so that's that's the first two lines so far. Very good, gang. Okay, next line, e kala. Hey, you son. That's what you're saying there. Hey, listen up, son. E kala, and everybody's gonna say mana. Okay, uh, and mana is um, so we're saying impart mana. So when we say mana, mana is got lots of translations too as well. Uh, typically, it's translated as strength. Um, or generally, it can be also translated as spiritual strength too as well. But mana has much more meaning than just those two things. It can mean to have authority, to have the right to do things. Um, yeah, or, or a different pathway to go a different way. Uh, yeah, so it, it means all of that too. But uh, here I'm saying impart mana. And so uh, hopefully it's got to do with strength and all the different various ways we may have to find ways that we can find healing too as well. Okay, so let's go from the top. E kala, e kala, and everybody says, ki ola. Oh, mahalo, I have some um, um, some alls. Thank you, thanks gang. Okay, so from the top, e kala, e kala, ki ola ola. Mahalo, e kala, mana. Yeah, very good. Okay, so when we say mana, we're going to say it like we mean it, like mana. Okay, yeah, like lots of oomph emphasis in there. Let's try those lines again. E kala, e kala. Ki ola ola. E kala. Mana. Yeah, like that, just like that. Okay, cool. Then I'll say e kala, and then you guys are going to say lu helele ike oho. Okay, so let's try. Lu helele ike oho. And... Lu helele i keoho. Thank you. Okay, so e kala. Hey, son. Hey, you, son. We're still addressing you. Lu helele i keoho. Yeah, and so lu helele i keoho means, uh, okay, it's another one of those uh, lots of things being um, discussed here um, in just this short, in this short line. So lu, if I were, if I had a handful of um, beans and, and I, and I sort of just threw it like that, that strew it about like that. Whoo, um, that that act of the seeds flying everywhere. That's Lou. Um, uh, Lou can also mean if I have a sailboat and um, the sails are up and uh, it's capturing the wind and the way that it's like just extended far out like that as it's moving. Um, that's also Lou too as well. So. Um, Lu is, is um, what happens like if I put my hair up in a bun and then I let it go and it all falls down. That can also be Lu too as well and Helele'i. So these are all terms describing the uh, rays of the sun. And um, Oho, Oho means hair. So um, it also means things that come, you know, like fuzzy things, leaves. Leaves can also be Oho. Ferns can also be Oho. So it's that idea of as the sun is just about to rise out from um, behind um, the horizon or below the horizon coming up, right? The first thing you see are all the, the rays of the sun. And that sort of looks like this idea of Lu, right? Um, as, as it gets up higher and, and the light expands. So Lu Helele Ikeoho. So let's try. I'm going to say E Kala, and then you guys are going to say Lu Helele Ikeoho. Let's try. E Kala. Lu Helele Ikeoho. Very good. Thank you very much. So from the top, gang, from the top. Here we go. E Kala, E Kala. Ki Ola E Kala. Mana. E Kala. Lu Helele Ikeoho. Very good. Oh, I'm excited. This, we're going to get a nice zing zing off of this pulley. Okay, awesome. 
All right, great. And so the next line, uh, I'll say Okala. So A eh, is now A, eh, the sun. Okay, the sun. Oh, there it is. It came up above the horizon. The sun. Okay. And then you're going to say Lapa Lapa. Okay, so I'll say Okala. And then you say Lapa Lapa. Okay. Here we go. Okala. Lapa Lapa. Thank you. Okay. So now that the sun is up above the horizon, right? It's, it's starting to come up above the horizon. We can, feel, uh, we can feel fire. And so one of the things that's happening um, that they're utilizing when the composer chose these words, they're likening this particular uh, movement of the sun to the building of a fire, okay, as the fire is getting bigger and bigger. So, so, so while the sun was below, it wasn't so strong, but now that it's starting to get up above the horizon, we can see the fire is starting to... It, it's it's kindling and now it's doing this lapa lapa thing where it's um starting to blaze and starting to uh there's flames now and things like that so we, we're starting to feel some heat okay so that's what's happening here so let's try from the top here we go ekala ekala kiola ola ekala mana ekala lu helele ikioho okala Lapa lapa. Very good. Okay. Then I say okala, and then you guys are gonna say ahinui. Okay. So I say okala, and you say ahinui. ahinui. Thank you. Thank you, Nuli. Okay. Yeah. So here's the sun again. Now it's like totally up. It's up. It's up in the sky. Okay. Ahinui. It's a primary fire, right? Like, so it's just like ahinui. It's like, oh, okay, there's a big fire now. So we went from lapa lapa as the flames are starting to um, show up above the horizon to now it's like the whole sun is out there. And it's just this primary form of heat that's coming, right? And one of the interesting things that happens here in Hawaii, and I don't know if it happens anywhere else, I can just only speak about Hawaii, but uh, if you're a surfer, one of the best waves that happen happens is when the sun peaks up over the horizon and then you get a nice you get a nice wave that comes through it's almost like this energy is released as the sun is coming up over the horizon and so all of a sudden there's the best uh, usually grab it and then go it back in but yeah anyway so there's this um it's definitely something that radiates and that's what's happening here this idea of radiating from this small ball of fire that was below the horizon to now it's lu helelei and it's starting to um, radiate higher and higher and get hotter and hotter. And so that's what's happening here. So ahinui, primary fire, okay? Um, all right, so shall we go from the top? All right, let's go. Ekala, ekala. Ki ola ola. Ekala. Mana. Ekala. Lu helelei ki oho. Okala lapa lapa. Okala ahinui. Very good. And then I'm gonna say ahi ai vaiva and ahi ai vaiva means divine fire. Okay. Well, it can translate to divine fire. Ai ai vaiva means wondrous, uh, mysterious, extraordinary. All those words, majestic. Those kinds of terms. Is, is how you can translate um, Iviva, supernatural, just something that we cannot ex actually do ourselves. We have to enjoy the sun as it's doing its thing. Okay, so, okay, Ahi Iviva, and then you're going to reply saying Ve Veo. Okay, so I say Ahi Iviva, and you say Ve Veo. Okay, let's try Ahi Iviva. Ve Veo. Very good. Okay, all right. So, um, Veveo is actually um, the color of the sky that happens in the morning and in the evenings. And it, Veveo is this reddish orange color that, um, so yeah, there are several red colors that we're going to be talking about right now. And as this is as the sun is rising. So yeah, here we go. So um, I, I'm going to do the, uh, okay. Uh, so Veveo. So think, think in your heads, sunrise orange reds those kinds of things okay so very veil if you look in a fire or as the fire is going that red that orange that's in the fire that's the color that we're trying to um have in our minds and, and um acknowledge and address as the sun is going up okay from the top ekala ekala 
Kiola ola. Ekala mana. Ekala lu helele ikioho. Okala lapa lapa. Okala ahinui. Ahi ai vaiva. Ve veo. Nice. Okay, mano no no kuno no lua. And those those two words are talking about mano no no is when things are getting redder. Your skin starts to get a little redder because there's heat coming. The best way I like to explain mano no no is you guys ever did Indian burns to your sisters or brothers? You went to somebody's arm and you uh, gave them the Indian burn. Yeah, that's actually mano no no. So that idea of heat. Okay, so that, that's what's happening to your skin. You're starting to feel a little prickly from the heat. So that's mano no no. Red, 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 red. And then kuno no lua is this intensity that's happening, the intensification of that red. So it's going from a little Indian bird, now it's getting, you know, almost like a sunburn. That's what's happening. Okay, the idea of a sunburn. So I say, mano no no, kuno no lua. And then you guys say, beveo. Okay, so let's try. Mano no no, kuno no lua. Veveo. Very good. Okay, from the top. Ekala, ekala. Ki ola ola. Ekala. Mana. Ekala. Lu helele ikioho. Okala. Lapa lapa. Okala. Ahinui. Ahi ai vaiva. Veveo. Nice. Mano no no, kuno no lua. Veveo. Very good. Okay. Then I say, kuno no kolu kala. The, la, the, the sun is getting extremely fiery red, which is also happening to your skin too as you're getting sunburned. Now you're not just a little sunburn. It's like totally red now. Okay. Which I do not recommend. Not good. Not good. But you know, the idea of things getting hotter and hotter. Okay. So I say, kuno no kolu kala. And then you say, veveo. Ve okay. All right. Kuno no kolu kala. Veveo. Very good. Ya oi ke ola. And you say? Veveo. Ve so through you is healing. Through you, through this idea of this heat coming on and trying to wash away this illness that I have, this maybe depression, this anxiety I might be feeling. I'm going to feel better with the sun. Okay, so kuno no kolu kala veveo. Ya oi ke ola. Through the sun comes life, comes healing, comes well-being comes this possibility for us to be able to thrive. Okay, ya oi ke ola, ve veo. Okay, you guys are gonna say ve veo, ready? So, ya oi ke ola, ve veo. Then I say, ya oi kamana, through you comes strength. Okay, so, ya oi kamana, and you're gonna say, ve veo. Very good, and then I say, ya oi kamalu, through you is uh, like this idea of relief, release, respite. Okay, that idea. So, ya oi ke ola. And you say? Ve veo. Ya oi kamana. Ve veo. Ya oi kamalu. Ve veo. All right. Kamalu hia. Ve veo. Yeah. Okay, very good. So, those all come together. So, this idea of as the sun is going up, going up, heating us up, heating us up, we're starting to get this um release we're starting to feel better we're starting to be um relieved of whatever it is we're stressed out about okay that's happening there ve ve and then kamaluhia ve ve so this reprieve we're finally able to get some shelter some protection some relief ve ve the fire is still there okay from the sun and then i say ya oi keola and we're all going to say together keola nui hoi so let's try Keola nui hoi. Very good. Then we're all going to say, I ola ya pele, I mana ya ka hoali'i. Let's all say that. And, I ola ya pele, I mana ya ka hoali'i. Very good. So let me just talk about what these um, natural processes are, okay? Because I know somebody's like, oh my God, it's pele. Okay, so again, Back to what I said, Akua was just natural processes that are in the environment. We're not talking about um, other things, how other people translate the word Akua. But this idea of Pele is um, magma hot in the earth. So we're trying to activate that heat within us so that we can find a way to, um, to overcome whatever it is we're feeling. And then, Yaoi, Imana Ya Kahoali'i. Kahoali'i in the Hawaiian thought. Um, 
There are several different translations for Kahoali'i, but one of them is that it's the Akua that while the sun sets, it goes underneath the earth and then it pops up right the other side uh, for the next morning. Well, while it's underneath us, um, that realm of it being underneath, the sun being underneath, belongs to Kahoali'i. So this idea of while the sun, or while our earth is uh, spinning, right, as it's spinning, rotating, um, that, that, that energy will make it go through behind so we can't see it, but then it'll pop up again the next day. Okay, so that's, that's why we're just a uh, Pele is magma. That's how we're addressing this idea of Pele. Heat inside that we want out. And then this heat that we don't see um, while, while we're sleeping, we want that to be able to come back up and, and be at the temperature that we need to be at or be at the uh, mindset that we need to be at. That's what we want. So anything that is not supposed to be there can go away. Okay, so... Keola nui hoi, iola ya pele, i mana ya kahoali. And then we all say, iole. So everybody say, iole. Iole. Ua noa kanawai akia kua. Ua noa kanawai akia kua. A mama ua noa. A mama ua noa. Okay, very good. And so those last three lines are saying, restoration, restore, restore us back to good. Uh, good, good thoughts, good minds, good feelings, good beings, all of those things. Uh, so now um, our time, this exchange that we're having with the sun is done. It's over. Uh, and we release each other. And so the sun can carry on and do its thing because we, we shouldn't stay there for that long of a time, just enough for the heat uh, to get us a little heated and then continue on its way. Uh, and then um, this idea, amama uano, which means relinquish, let it go, let it let it fly, removed, um, because uh, you can't be in ceremony all day long. That's not good. <laughs> so you can only be in ritual ceremony for a short amount of time, um, and that's the energy that you have uh, for that time being to exchange with whatever's out there, and then let it go. Okay. All right. Let's try it from the top. Okay. Thank you, Neil Lee, for helping me. Uh, thank you, Mahalo. It uh, helps. <laughs> Because otherwise, I have to make up the sound in my head. Okay, here we go. And go. Ekala, ekala. Ki ola ola. Ekala. Mana. Ekala. Nu helele ikioho. Okala. Lapa lapa. Okala. Ahinui. Ahi ai vaiva. Veveo. Ma no no no. Kuno no lua. Veveo. Kuno no kolu kala. Veveo. Wait, did I see ya? Ya oi keola. Veveo. Ya oi kamana. Veveo. Ya oi kamalu. Veveo. Kamalu hia. Veveo. Ya oi keola. Keola nui hoi. I ola ya tele. I mana ya kahuali. Very good. I ola e ua noa kanawa ya ke akua. A mama ua noa. And then when we're done, we clap twice like that. Yeah, it's hard to do the together chanting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's try that again because I think I dropped some lines because I was um, just uh, fascinated with what I was hearing. Okay, here we go. Let's do it for real. We're going to do it like we mean it tonight, gang. We're going to mean it. Um, oh, somebody's going to ask me, I know, when can I do this chant? So the answer is in the morning. That's when you should do it. Okay? All right, here we go. Ready? And. Ekala, ekala. Ki ola ola. Ekala. Mana. Ekala. Nu helele ikioho. Okala. Lapa lapa. Okala. Ahinui. Ahi ai vaiva. Veveo. Mano no no kuno no lua. Veveo. Kuno no kolu kala. Veveo. Ya oi keola. Veveo. Ya oi kamana. Veveo. Ya oi kamalu. Veveo. Kamalu hia. Veveo. Ya oi keola. Keola nui hoi. I ola ya pele. 
i mana ya kaho ali i ola e ua noa kanawai a kua a mama ua noa yeah awesome okay cool all right let me just show you the last the slides that thank you that's um my uh my gift to you for this evening and uh let me uh finish off my um powerpoint presentation <laughs> now that i can get back to that okay here we go uh well this is such a mess so i'm glad uh we're moving along okay and my last slide says Mahalo nui, e papaku o kameha ikanama. Thank you so much for inviting me. Um, and another one of the things that we can think about the sun is that it's always going to rise the next day, right? So we can always look forward to maybe we didn't do it right this day, but maybe tomorrow we could do a better thing. And and so you know if that should be sort of our way of of thinking about how it's okay, yeah. And the sun. The sun is sort of our guide throughout our life and our years, our, our, our age is all based on what the sun is doing every day. Time is based on what the sun is doing every day. So all of these things are out there for us. It, the sun reminds us about these things, that it is always possible to think about um, doing things one more day. We can, we can handle, if anything, if we're all stressed out, we can always know that a new day is gonna start and we could try again. Okay, well, I, um, I think I'm. I think I'm good. Does anybody have any questions that they'd like to ask? I don't. Um, I don't see any new questions. Okay, but um, you know, people have mentioned a couple of things, like Thaddeus um, shared. There are electric lights that simulate the UV rays of the sun that can be used for SAD. Uh, oh. Which I think is interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, oh. Also, uh, we <laughs> then we also had Lemomi Asing um, on the Kanainai uh, Facebook Live. She said maybe rather than go to the beach, find lakes, rivers, or streams for kapukai and hi That's mm -hmm. kind of yeah. Cool. Showers. Yeah. Your your bathtub. Having a shower uh, make you feel better all the time. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. These are just simple <laughs> things just to get through the day that we can all do yeah. yeah i love it thank you for sharing that okay we uh, feel warm already <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i and i have to apologize i don't really have any answers about healing and those kinds of things because i'm i'm not a healer but i i do highly recommend that you those folks who who need to seek that kind of help actually go and do that yeah for sure yeah i'm here to pep talk you to go ahead and go do that yay that's a good thing <laughs> yeah. um thank you to katie camela mela for mentioning um the link to kanainai together um, oh that's right thank yeah. you yeah we have a free app that has um something like 15 chants on it that um is uh, mixed with all kinds of healing chants we do our mornings you can find us on facebook um we have a group called kanai night together as well uh we're on we're on um i think we're on instagram too as well we're on um uh youtube we have a channel so yeah come and check us out uh, we have a zoom um yeah if you uh, just go to the chat box katie's got it in there you can click on it and then and then sign up and come join us yeah yeah we collectively help each other feel a little better every day and so um yeah that's that's kind of what our our, our group does so yeah. Mahalo. Mahalo. Um, your tech support can put that out on, on every single Facebook Live now. <laughs> um, that would be very, very helpful. Um, thank you. Thank you so much, Kale. And yeah. uh, her app is awesome. I okay. use it. I, it's, it's so helpful. It's easy to um, navigate as well. So I have it okay. saved on my phone. Cool. So. That's uh, Katie Kamela Mela actually put that together for us. She's, she's awesome. She's the tech lady, so <laughs> yeah, and very passionate about all of that too. So uh, yeah, we, we just, we're just doing our thing. We're just trying to get, get through, you know, just trying to get through the day like everybody else. And yeah, um, anyway, I, I wanna say thank you to both of you for inviting me to talk. Uh, I hope it was educational, if not at least a little entertaining. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's, it's uh, I. Uh, good luck to you folks while you uh, move forward on this venture and um, 
bringing great things to people to learn and to understand. So yeah, little little insight into our culture. So thank you so much. Well, just with all the different Facebook chat, everyone, um, you know, saying their aloha and congratulations to you. Oh, thank um, you. Everybody, Mahi La Pera. Um, uh, we also had um, Candice Fujikane. Oh, yeah. All, all these people, like, giving their warmth of aloha to oh, you. To you. We had Noilani Iokepa girl. We had Mele oh, Opana. Yeah. Mehana Hine. She was Yay. sharing. So thank you. <laughs> all of you um sharing your aloha to her and for joining us yeah um we will have um we will have uh next month at the um kumu hula uh okulani hot padella she will be sharing on um the date is monday november 16th and she will be sharing on mauliola cleansing the spirit mind and body Mm. Um, so it should be kind of cool uh, to check that out if you want to join us next month, Monday, November 16th. Um, please uh, check out our Facebook um, page, Papaku no Kamiha Ikana, as well as our Instagram, Papaku no Kamiha Ikana as well. Um, you can check it out and we'll have some updates there. Um, and we have so much more in store for next year. Yuli and I are kind of trying to think of other great um, workshops that we can do and encourage our, our the lehu lehu. So mahalo to Kale. Um, I want to or to Nuli'i um, if you want to share something. No. Mahalo Dr. Kale Nu'uhiva. Um, <laughs> just want to shout out that because of this whole presentation was about the sun, get out into your environment. Mm -hmm. Feel the heat. But Wear your mask. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> six feet distancing, please. But get out yeah. into the environment. Sun yeah. is always healing. Got to feel the warmth. Got to feel it. Yeah, yeah. And, and thank you for, for responding during the chanting. That helped me out plenty. <laughs> thank, you, thank you. you. You know my mom would have been right there doing it. Yeah, your yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Auntie, Auntie Ala, Mr. Plenty. Yeah. yeah. You guys are awesome, though. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Wonderful. So we're going to close out with Uwehe Akel. Yeah. Uwehe Akea Iaka Honoa Onavahia Pau E Alae Alae Alae. Ua vehe a ke a ia ka ho no a o na vahi a pau e ala e ala e ala e. Ua vehe a ke a ia ka ho no a o na vahi a pau e ala e ala e ala e. Mahalo. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Oh, thank you to Didi Cross. Thank you to Vernet Mowgli. Thank you, M Malia Kipapa. Rina uh, Ala Madera, Saloha. Thank you for joining in with us. We appreciate you all um, signing in and saying um, beautiful words in the chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mahalo. Thank you to Kanai, uh, Kanai Wakana. Um, as well and our Facebook um, cross partners for um, supporting us. We're so thankful to Hawaii Nui Akea School of uh, Knowledge, Papa Ololokahi, Ahakane, Office of Hawaiian Affairs, Council for Native Hawaiian Advancement, OEV TV and Mana Maoli, as well as um, Hawaiian Kind 105.1. Um, we appreciate all your help. Mahala Nui, Pakahi Apau. Aloha.